And just like the prodigal son, I've returned, back from 2015's Tucson Comic Convention. You know, this makes it two years in a row now that I've somehow managed to avoid catching any kind of con flu, so let's see if we can keep that tradition going in 2016, eh? Although, I do have one little piece of advice for anybody who might be going to a convention of their own in the near future. Uh, if your costume incorporates any kind of rubber gloves, bring extras. Luck is an element almost every game out there incorporates. Critical hits, random loot drops, or even stage and enemy behavior in some cases are all aspects of design that are totally beyond your control. Even in a game like Journey, something as simple as just happening across a player who knows where everything is and is more than willing to show you falls into this category. Chance plays a huge role in how someone could both play and enjoy your game, especially in a multiplayer setting. So, like anything else, it's something you really need to analyze the proper place of in your work, or if it belongs at all. I'm going to disguise my desire to play more Binding of Isaac behind a thin layer of relevance and use it as the example. Roguelikes are probably what first comes to mind when you think of games where luck is the primary factor. A good or bad run can be almost entirely dependent on the circumstances given to you. Maybe the enemy placement will be agreeable, maybe it won't. Maybe you'll get some good upgrades, or maybe the build you end up with will be completely useless. This is why I still believe Kane is one of the most overpowered characters in the game. Because he starts with the lucky foot item, he turns most of the randomness in your favor. You'd think this would be infinitely frustrating, that nobody would want to play a game where you have little to no control over your fate. Except in Isaac, that's not necessarily the case. Because this is an action game, survival is largely dependent on how well you can react to the enemies you're pitted against. The items you find along the way can certainly help a battle go faster and be easier, but with enough skill and practice, there's nothing stopping you from going an entire run without taking a single hit, even if you skip every item you come across. Hell, there's a challenge, several achievements, and even an entire character based around this concept. The only difference luck makes in Isaac is that it lowers the skill level needed to make that happen. You see, the element of randomness is a huge part of the game by design, but what keeps it from feeling detrimental is that it's fair. Every hit you take is your fault, not the random number generators. You will never run into a situation where you simply don't have the tools necessary to make some kind of progress, which is why when one run ends, you're compelled to immediately try again because now you know what you did wrong last time. Now you can take those skills and maybe avoid some damage on the earlier floors to make the later ones easier. Just happening to find an item like Ipecac along the way this time is just a bonus. But that's only in single-player games. How do you apply these ideas to a multiplayer environment? I guarantee most people would tell you not to try. After all, I'm sure we've all been in a match where a shot just happened to be critical and cleared the way for the rest of your team. We've all had that moment in Hearthstone where you top-decked the exact card you needed right when you needed it. And depending on which side this happens to, it can either be the best or the worst feeling in the world. And the thing is, most of these are examples of something that truly is out of your hands. You can optimize your deck's mana curve, you can mulligan your entire starting hand, but in any deck designed to be competitive, there's still that slim chance that you simply won't draw anything you can use for several turns. You can place your sentry in an optimal spot, you can back away so you have time to react in case an uber charges towards you, but if an enemy soldier just happens to fire a blue rocket at an inopportune moment, there's no way you can plan for that. But think about this for a second. How many times does that actually happen? Not very often, I'm willing to wager. In fact, over all your games, a moment like that is such a perfect set of circumstances, such an anomaly compared to everything else you've experienced for the past 40 hours or so that I wouldn't blame you for being a little taken aback. Human beings are just wired to focus on the bad as opposed to the good, so all it takes is that one occurrence to color your perception of the game differently for the rest of time. Don't. You. Believe it. You don't get to Legend Rank by playing Mad Bomber in the hopes that he'll throw all three shots right where you need them. You won't see people in League tournaments firing Ezreal's True Shot Barrage in any given direction hoping to hit something. Then again, you probably won't be seeing tournament goers playing Ezreal, period. 
When you take the bigger picture into account, skill will always trump luck in a good multiplayer game. So as long as you find ways to encourage taking that into account, I'd say you're golden. But why worry about any of this in the first place? Why not just cut out the problem altogether instead of dancing around it? Is there some kind of advantage the element of chance offers that a game without it doesn't? Well, let me ask you this. How awesome is it to just happen to get an overpowered item on the first floor in Isaac and use it to completely dominate the early game? Or to start a new run right next to the treasure room and begin with a free upgrade for no effort? How does it feel to hop into a multiplayer game you know nothing about, where you're positive everyone is way better than you by now, and then you just happen to get a lucky critical and contribute to the team? Now compare that to a game where you die once, twice, three times without killing anyone, and end up being on the bottom of the scoreboard. You join another match, immediately get plugged by a sniper, and then you throw the disc in the garbage. I want to remind everyone that the competitive tournament and speedrunning crowds are not the only ones who will be giving you a shot. In fact, they make up the overwhelming minority. Sometimes those cool little moments can be the difference between building a lifelong fan and making an ardent deserter out of your player. It gives noobs a chance to actually have fun and win for a change. And last I checked, isn't that the point of a game in the first place? To enjoy yourself? As long as you make it seem fair to those who need it to be, you'll do the impossible and please everybody. There are other aspects to this, like how some companies try to weaponize luck against you with things like gotcha boxes, but I think the shady tactics companies will use to squeeze more money out of you are best saved for another time. What else is really important to know? Uh, pack a water bottle, that's important. Um, make sure the little breathy holes on your mask are big enough for you to actually get air through. I made that mistake this year. Uh, if you see a guy dressed as Deadpool who's dressed as Link, don't worry, that's perfectly normal. Um, they do not allow any kind of metal implement to your costume on the Tucson convention grounds, which would have been really nice to know for you to post on your website somewhere I could find before the show. Just throwing that out there, brought a little drill that didn't have a bit on it to implement into the Payday costume. I thought it was funny. Uh, oh, and if you see a Team Rocket member with pink hair, ask her about the mythical Slowpoke Gym. You will not be disappointed.